Good morning, neighbors. <coughs> Pardon. Distributed control theory. It's interesting uh, Google should take you to <coughs> probably Wikipedia. Distributed control theory. That became my field of specialty back in the 1980s, applying, maintaining a distributive control system in an industrial environment. This was a chemical plant. The system, 1980s, had parallel processors for failure mode. So if one CPU died, a whole nother rack and subassembly took up the work it was doing and continued running that part of the facility. There were dozens of these redundant computer systems running discrete areas of the plant, and they all talked with each other and sent their information up above. Distributive controls. The other specialty of mine was data collection devices, end of line devices. How that control system would talk to other vendors' systems and information gathering and the security and the trust in those things from gas chromatographs to thermocouple scanners to individual instruments out there measuring temperatures or CO2 or methane levels, analog devices, digital devices. This is the world of industrial controls, massively parallel systems with redundancies built in in case of failures. This is early 1980s. This is on uh, digital equipment's hardware for the most part. Underneath that is a company called Electronics Modules Corporations that built the electronics for the space shuttle simulator that was amazingly similar to the electronics for these distributive control systems. Almost as if one bred the other, one fed the other. Massive chemical plants, huge systems. Then those systems began to come outside the plants and across the state or across the country or across the planet. Distributed control systems. They do everything these days from supply chain management to manufacturing to robotics controls out of an end device because all of a sudden there's a demand for a million more whistles. And so the whistle machine gets turned up. Distributed control systems. Underneath that, the language that we programmed in was Fortran. Real-time systems controls. The language was replaced and evolved and moved on since then, but Fortran still is buried under some large systems to this date. It's an archaic programming language at this point. It's the domain of uh, rocket scientists, mostly. The reason I brought up distributive controls is the amount of software underneath all of those hardware things sitting there running a chemical plant. There's an operator sitting and staring at five computer screens, maybe two operators, and they've got a few shared screens that they might punch buttons on. They've got their own screens they're responsible for watching a computer before video games watching a plant capable of blowing up square miles of land of destroying property and lives rather quickly if it got out of hand and that computer system is what kept that from doing it that computer system also replaced a thousand laborers in another country if the plant was built before these controls were available, and it was, then it takes more people. So this getting rid of people, the human liability inside these systems is valuable on many levels. Finding cheap labor in cheap labor countries with no environmental controls saves billions. You turn those on with a flip of a switch now from some aspects. Distributive control systems. The algorithms buried inside those control systems escaped. 
it's uh, back in the in the 80s there were two lines of people really IBM and then not IBM it was the world of uh, Unix systems off on the side yeah Unix <coughs> high security systems <coughs> based on Unix platforms because few people knew how to get into them, knew what they were. But those that did were as dangerous as those. Defense in depth becomes a conversation with things, systems like this. You have to keep the bad guys away. You sit in a room for hours talking about defense in depth. Network layers. Routers, router positionings, Wi-Fi positioning, which way Wi-Fi points, security on the network internally, the network layers required for security, the algorithms that look at things for security. Algorithm is a misnomer. It's a, not a great word to be using inside of software, although it's a piece of it. It's so bland and vague a notion that doesn't mean a whole lot. Somewhere, there's basically if-then-else structures. If this is true, else if this is true, and that is true. <laughs> Hit the like button. It's hard to speak to these complexities. The, this, again, real-time process controls this theory of distributive process controls applies outside of the computer world. We put bounds and limits on peoples and things. Those are process controls. Anyway, peace is out.